going to uh, uh, to continue somehow what I was trying to do last, uh, in lecture three, and then if I will have some time, I will actually uh, go, uh, uh, give some application of, of, of uh, this what I did before. So, uh, so we need to remember actually only one thing from from yesterday uh, lecture, which is the following. So maybe first let me remind you uh, the setting. So, uh, so we had uh, m uh, and n. A1 invariant sheaf. Um, and so we were trying to show that it is actually uh, n plus one strongly invariant. And uh, so th the main thing that I, I explained uh, yesterday was the following uh, fact. So that if, uh, so from yesterday. If, uh, if you have x, which is essentially smooth for k, and uh, small x, the point uh, of co-dimension dimension n plus 1, and then the local cohomology Whose value in M at this point is uh, so is isomorphic to uh, N uh, contracted N plus one time, and then you uh, evaluate it at the point. That's the only thing that I will that you will need from yesterday uh, lecture. Um, and the, yeah, I mean this is this is also true for uh, for uh, lower codimension, but somehow uh, it's kind of easier. To prove it for uh, smaller codimension points. Um, okay, so uh, and so what, what can we do with this? So from here we we can now uh, uh, prove the following proposition. Right, and maybe before going on, so so, so in particular, I, I uh, somehow this information will will tell us uh, what are the terms of the Cousin complex. Uh, of n up to uh, so up to degree n plus one, and so we're, we're tr going to try to use this to uh, to go further. Uh, so uh, and we will use the following proposition. So uh, let x be uh, essentially smooth local, but without any condition on the on the dimension, so it can be arbitrarily large. So then the following, then we have the following. So two properties. So first one is uh, that. Uh, so the cohomology of the Cousin complex of x and n is zero for uh, one for i between one and uh, and n. And second property is a similar one, but uh, for the Cousin complex of the affine line over x. For this image. Right, so so, so the, the, yeah, the interesting thi thing here is that x can be uh, arbitrary uh, uh, big. Uh, dimension of x is, uh, there is no bond on the, on the dimension. OK, so how, how do we uh, prove such a thing? So we are, uh, yeah. Do by induction, but more precisely, I will. Um, so I, I, I introduce some uh, some notation. So I, I'll write P D. Uh, so this is for uh, the, the first statement. So uh, statement one or property one for uh, X of dimension less than, than B. And similarly, I will write Q. B for the property two, uh, uh, the same range, and so what I'm going to do here now is to show that uh, P D implies Q D, and Q D implies P D plus one. And so this is how the the, pr the proof works. So we, we we prove this application, and then by induction we 
we get this property. Okay? And I'm only going to use this uh, this knowledge here. So, okay. So how does it how does this work? So, let's uh, prove uh, the first implication. So, so for PD, PD. Um, so may maybe I, I I draw a picture. I think it would be better to draw a picture. So, uh, so what what is what do we have? So we have this. Uh, local scheme uh, x, okay, so it has uh, a generic point here, it has a closed point, and so some, some point somewhere, um, uh, right? And so, uh, so over this we have the affine uh, line. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm interested I'm interested in showing that uh, the, the, the Cousin complex uh, has no cohomology in some degree, uh, in degree i, so uh, and for i between one and n. So I, I have to look. So let me remind you. So the, so the so so so, so, uh, so a class here will be uh, will be given by some element in Ci, and Ci is like uh, uh, a sum of uh, m minus i. Evaluated um, at co-dimension i points, right? So, so let's let's uh, maybe put this in on the picture. So, uh, assume I have some some points here of co-dimension i. Okay, uh, but I'm looking at at a class in uh, over a one x. So I actually have to, uh, to to do these points there. So so for every point here, I have uh, a similar point upstairs, uh, which is somehow obtained by, by, like by adding the, the variable, right? So, so if, if this is uh, maybe, if, if this has res residue field kappa, this will have residue field kappa t. Okay, so these are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, points of A1. But, but o over A1, I, I have a, a, a other point of co-dimension i, uh, which somehow are obtained as follows. So you, t you take points of co-dimension uh, i minus 1, so here, this is of maybe this is too, this is too 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 small, but okay. So these these are co-dimension i, these are co-dimension i minus one, and there you, you have to to pick uh, points which which are finite over these points. So for, for so we have this kind of picture here. Okay, is this clear? Yeah. And uh, moreover, over e uh, each of these points, I have uh, again somehow one of these uh, generic. Yeah, so they, they crystallize like this. Okay, so this somehow the picture over over what's happening here. All right, so now let, let, let's try to uh, to, to prove this, uh, this implication. Uh, so I have I have uh, uh, an element uh, so a, a class in, in the H I over of the cousin complex of this. So it's represented by some uh, elements here. So uh, I don't know, it's called an alpha. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is uh, is the following. So first, I will. Um, okay, so I, I have some bunch of elements, so alpha, alpha, and let's call this alpha, alpha prime maybe and alpha double prime. So I'm I'm first going to get rid of this alpha prime here, and for this it's uh, um, it's kind of it's kind of easy because so uh, so if you, if you look at each of these uh, of this part of the complex, so this is like the Cousin complex of A1 over one of the residue field here. And the Cousin complex of A1, we know that it's acyclic in, in, uh, in, in degree one. So I can find, uh, I can find the beta here. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just using, using it, I'm, I'm using th this part of the Cousin complex, which is just the Cousin complex of, of A1 over one of the residue field there. So, so I have these alpha, alpha primes and so I can find the beta which will, will uh, with residue is given precisely by these alpha primes and zero other ones, right? So using this beta, I can somehow change my, my co-cycle into one which has uh, zero uh, everywhere on these points. So and then I get something uh, which are somehow uh, uh, concentrated on, uh, on this part uh, of the Cousin complex. Uh, but then because it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a co-cycle, it will have uh, uh, it will have to uh, have uh, so th the residue will have to be zero uh, for all the points uh, that th 
which is a specialization of, of, of this case uh, and therefore it's, it's again by using the the, uh, the the fact that the cousin complex of a1 is uh, is known uh, we see that that these classes are actually coming from uh, classes here by by pulling back okay and so so what I, what I want to, 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 to say here is that because because my i is smaller than n uh, I'm only using somehow uh, uh, yeah I, I can do this argument because I, I know uh, I, uh, because I know this. If I didn't know this, it, this will not work. So, so it's yeah, and, and below it's zero. The, the, it's zero by, the by the by the by by PD. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the first implication. Now the second implication is uh, uh, I guess this is uh, QD implies PD plus one. So this is this, this is this is uh, this can be done by uh, using uh, Gabber's lemma. So this is by Gabber's lemma. So I again, I sketch the argument. So now, how does it work? So here, um, so uh, I, I want to show uh, P D plus one. So I, I'm going to to take x, which is of higher dimension. So uh, okay, so let x let x be of dimension d plus one. And so uh, we, we pick a co-cycle there. So let alpha be uh, like this. Uh, well maybe x is like y. Uh, be a co-cycle in uh, the cousin complex. So I, then I can I can speak about the support of this because so only finitely many of these alpha. Uh, will, will be non-zero, so let, let z inside uh, x be the support. Um, and then, so by, by Gabriel's lemma, I mean, okay, um, that, that maybe what I'm going to, to to do here is not maybe completely correct, but by Gabriel's lemma, we can assume that there is something like this, so a morphism to uh, a one y with y, let's say also. Um, um, local of dimension uh, d now, right? so this uh, y will be of dimension d, uh, such that the uh, the support of uh, of this alpha maps isomorphically to, to to its image, and therefore I can uh, because of this uh, property. I can view this alpha also as a as a cocycle in the cousin complex of this variety, okay? And then, uh, and then we, we can conclude by uh, using uh, uh, property QD, okay? That's somehow the the strategy. Yes, which which is which is uh, which is the property QD. So, so, uh, so the property QD is is this one here. So the vanishing of the cohomology of this. Yeah. Yeah, but why has I mentioned D, which is fine. Um. Uh, can you say again? Sorry. I oh yeah, but by, by, by functoriality. So, so, uh, so that that is. Yeah, so this is et al, so, so there is a, a morphism of cousin complex. Yeah, but th this is—I uh, mean, this is an uh, right. I mean, if, if you want, to, one, one, one can. If you don't want to check anything, you can start with uh, with d equals zero, right? So uh, 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 p zero is kind of—it's uh, empty, I guess—and uh, p zero implies uh, q zero, which is uh, which is which is the fact that the, that the cousin complex of a one is is is, is, uh, is acyclic. Right. 
Right, okay, so ma ma maybe you have to, um, okay, I mean, the, okay, w w one way to do this is, I mean, uh, is, is to use that M is one strongly invariant, and the fact that the cousin complex of A1 computes uh, the cohomology of, 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 of A1. Using, using the Connivos factor sequence, and then uh, that will give you that this has to has has no cohomology in the, in the degree of in the degree of um, yeah. Okay. Do you have an extra black blackboard today, or am I am I wrong? Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, as a consequence of this, we can uh, we obtain the following. That x is substantially smooth, now not necessarily local. Uh, then the cohomology of x with value in m is computed using the Cousin complex. It's the cohomology of the Cousin complex of M if uh, so or for uh, uh, I between zero and and X. Um, so that's that's an easy consequence of the fact that um, that for X local uh, uh, this is true, right? So uh, yeah, for, for for X local the the Cousin comp so okay. So here's a sketch. So basically what you do, you, you look at the Cousin complex um, um, uh, of M uh, as uh, a complex of sheaves on, on the, um, on the Nisevich side, on the small Nisevich side. Nisevich side. X, uh, and so uh, so the point is that this uh, so th this is a resolution, uh, or maybe th then what you do you you, you truncate, uh, I guess up to uh, up to n, yeah. So, it's so you look at the, tr at the truncation, uh, and so then you you notice that this is this is a quasi isomorphism, uh, a quasi isomorphism. Local quasi isomorphism, uh, even for the for the for the Zariski topology, uh, and so you, um, and it, it is it is um, it is flask or what's uh, flubby I guess um, up to up to the last term so up to degree and and so using these two facts it's uh, it's an easy exercise in homological algebra to, to, to deduce what what you and, th and this actually also implies that you can put here Nisnevich or uh, or Zariski doesn't matter uh, bo both homology are, are, are given by this complex okay so Right, so I mean, I if it was probably in all degrees, and then this would be obvious. Now you have to 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 do some some small thing here, but because it's in degree n, it's not. It can be done. 
All right, so uh, then the next step is the following uh, proposition. And this would be somehow, yeah, the second key uh, proposition. Maybe the first one was the computation of the local cohomology. Um, so the solution is, is the following. So let x be in the extension smooth. Uh, any, any dimension. Um, let y inside x be a smooth hypersurface. It's not, again, essentially smooth hypersurface. Uh, let's call i the inclusion of y inside x. And so the claim is that if you look at uh, i upper shriek, uh, m of x, so let me let me write m of x for, th for the restriction of m to the small uh, Misnevich site of x. Uh, so I, I, I apply to this, uh, this i, uh, I upper shriek function. Um, and so the claim is that um, uh, now if you look at the, at the cohomology sheaves of this, So this is going to be zero for uh, two between j and plus one, and plus one, and also uh, also for maybe e to zero. Right, so so uh, if you if you are interested uh, uh, in this complex at two degree and plus one, you only find one um, one degree where there is. Uh, a non-zero homology sheet, which is degree i equal one, uh, j equal one. Okay, is this, is this st statement clear? Yeah. Oh, it's not clear. Okay, so it's true. So we we do this by contradiction. And. And I should say that by assumption, I, I, I will assume that I know this up to degree n, right? Um, remember, I'm, I'm working, uh, mm, I'm working by induction on, on n, so yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm only going to, to, to treat the case uh, the case um, um, n plus one, okay? So by contradiction, assume that this is not true, namely that um, uh, I have something in degree n plus one. Okay, and so let's, let's, let, let us pick a point of minimal dimension such that the, the the stock of this sheaf is non zero okay and um, What was the problem? What would happen if? So I, I, I'm working. I mean, the, 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 so th these are sheaves, right? This is. Oh, this is a sheet. Yeah, I, I tried to put it like. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs>
And now, so I, I want to to, do this, to to work locally at this point. So, I, so we, we can re we can replace x by uh, big x by the uh, localization of, of x. So actually, uh, we, we can assume that x is Euclidean. So that uh, so 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 yeah so somehow the uh, uh, non-vanishing of this uh, of the sheaf somehow happens only uh, at the, at this point. Okay. So now let, let let's let's try to do something with this. So uh, yeah. So we 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 have uh, so let's consider. Uh, the exact triangle or distinguished triangle as follow. So I have uh, M of X, the sheaf uh, M restricted, restricted to the small Yusnevich site of X. Uh, I have the I uh, lower star I upper shriek of F of, of MY, um, MX, sorry. Is this what I want to do? No, I, I don't want to do this. Sorry, uh, I have to, I want to do this now. Right? So I, I, I look at I after shrink M of X. Now it's the sheaf on Y. Uh, so uh, the the so I, I know the H zero, I mean, I, and I know also what what is the H one. The H one is going to be M minus one restricted to Y. And this is up to trivializing the um, the normal bundle of Y, but that's uh, what we have. So this is in degree minus one. Right, this, this is the H1, upper one of, of this sheaf. And then uh, the, 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 the cone of this map uh, is concentrated in degree uh, bigger than n plus 1, right? because this is the first uh, possibly non-zero uh, sheaf uh, that, 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 that we will get. So, so this will be the truncation n plus 1 of this i upper sheaf. Okay, so we have such a triangle. Okay, and so I'm. Yeah, I want to get to get some contradiction. I want to. I want to get. I, wa I want to prove that this is actually zero. So to, to get some contradiction. Okay, so what we do, we, we now apply to this. So remember, so so this is uh, on on the small Nisnevich site of Y. Um, and I ha uh, so X is a point of Y. So. Um, and what I'm going to do, I I'm going to apply x upper shrink to this uh, to this triangle. Okay, so apply x upper shrink, and then cohomology. I take cohomology, and so we will get uh, a, a long exact sequence. And so I, I, I write it to you. So uh, maybe I start with. Uh, um, with, with the middle term, so uh, yeah, so the middle term is um, uh, let let me s let me look at my notes and, and then I'll explain afterwards. So we we get the following thing. So we get local cohomology of y m minus one uh, going to local cohomology of N, and then we will get the the the, the, prob the problematic term here, so which is uh, H n plus one uh, I upper shake of n local at x, and then it continues to H n plus one x Okay, so um, yeah. So let, let me maybe. Uh, exp I mean, I I I, I could uh, spend some time explaining the sequence if you want, but um, so the the idea is that if you apply uh, x upper shrink uh, to this sequence, uh, here you will you will get something which has to do with the local cohomology of y. This will have to do with the local cohomology of x, 
But here, since this guy, uh, at least in degree n plus one, is supported at the point x, uh, you are just getting the, you are g just getting the, fi the fiber of, of, this, of this thing, okay? Uh, and that's why, why, why you, you would get this middle term there, which is uh, the thing that you would like to prove to, to be zero, okay? Is this clear, or should, should I explain more about this? It's, it's, a, it's a small computation in local cohomology. It's not really, right? So, so our, our goal is to show that this is equal to zero and to get the contradiction, right? So goal uh, to show that this guy here is zero. Okay, and so we are, we are going to do this by analyzing these, uh, these terms, okay? And, th and then, if, if, this, if you can do this, that then we are, we, we are done. Basically. Okay. So here, uh, l let's let's now uh, do this. So so we, we will distinguish uh, three cases. Uh, so we, we look at look at three cases uh, according to the dimension of x. All right. So uh, maybe I start with the easiest. So the dimension of x is smaller than n plus 1. Um, then uh, um, the, the, the dimension of, of y will be smaller than n. Right, so this one type. Okay, so yeah, so in particular, uh, what, what, what can... Uh, so, 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 so then this this will be zero, right? Uh, because uh, this is local cohomology of something which of this which is of dimension smaller than n, and the degree is n plus one, so it's too large. And okay, this, this this will be zero. These two these two terms uh, are possibly non-zero if if the dimension is equal to n plus one, right? If the dimension is equal, uh, uh, if the dimension of x is exactly n plus one, this is actually just like m minus one of x. And this is n minus one. Right? This is in the case where the dimension of big X is equal to n plus one. And that's somehow we, we've we've proved this before. Okay? That's um, th th this is a map that was indu inducing this isomorphism between uh, uh, between uh, h n minus one X and, and the local cohomology. Okay? So this map is an isomorphism, uh, and maybe I should just. This is really dirty. Uh, let's just take this case. Uh, so in, in this case, what, what we get, we get an isomorphism here and zero uh, otherwise. And so it's, it's an isomorphism. It's, it's, it's so this was uh, the, 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 the easy case. The second easy case is the following. So uh, one is when the dimension of x is larger than n plus 3. So let's, let's, let's try to analyze this situation. What we have here, uh, so in this case, I, I guess we will prove that these two guys uh, are zero, right? So, in this case, uh, h plus. So maybe I, I just do do one. I mean, the other one would be exactly the same, I guess. Um, right. So we want to show that this is equal to zero, but so what this is? This is just the cohomology in degree n of the complement because I am I'm assuming my uh, my x uh, to be um, uh, to be Hansenian right so that then then you have this but then now I can use that this is computed as a cohomology of the cousin complex of n by uh, the previous uh, corollary um, and now let, let's since the, since the dimension is is too large somehow uh, the the in the cousin complex the 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 term c n and c n plus one for x minus x and for x are the same because x is a point which is which is of codimension bigger than n plus one um, so this is actually the cohomology of the cousin complex of x but x is local so this is zero okay. And a, sim a similar argument uh, will tell you that this is also uh, equal to zero. Okay. Okay. 
And now let's, let's do the, the harder case, which is uh, the case dimension of x is equal uh, to n plus 2. OK, so let's see what, what, do, we, what do we get here. Uh, So, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, so in this case, what, what will happen is that these two terms will be zero, and we will we will have to show that this map is injective. So let, let, let me explain uh, why these why these terms are zero. And I guess it's because of the same. I mean, okay, I need I need this to be zero only, and actually this is the proof is already there, right? So this is zero, and now we are we are left to show that this is injective. So we need to show that. So and, and I will rewrite it differently. So I, I I'm, gonna, I, I'm going to use the fact that x is Pencilian to, to write this as hn, uh, I guess, y. Uh, n. n plus 1. OK, so this is the map that we want to show is injective. This is Sorry? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, injective. Maybe I keep the plus two. Okay, so yeah, so the, the idea is that this is like a this is like a Giesian morphism, right? And uh, uh, to show that this is injective, it's, it will be enough to show that what's coming here, uh, the term here is zero, but the term here will be like some uh, will be the cohomology um, of the complement, which is x minus y. That's basically the, the idea. So that's that's not completely. Uh, 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 the argument is not completely uh, okay here because uh, we don't know that this is equal to i upper shrink uh, of m. Remember, but we, we know we know it that it, we know this up to some degree, so we know that this is equal to the truncation. Uh, 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 maybe n or n plus one. Uh, but anyway, I think the, the yeah, and, and so so because because we are taking degree n, uh, it, it will work. So. So one has to do something here. Maybe I, 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 will, I will, unless you want me to do it, I will not uh, go. Okay. So I don't know if Mark is. Uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I want to say that this is uh, that I can put here i upper shrink of n and, and put the same degree here. So. Okay. So that's uh, that can be done, and then so we, we are reduced to showing that. That the term which which comes, which comes here, which is a, a, an H n. I guess, right? Because what what you have here is H n plus one x minus y. So, uh, okay, that's what we are left to show. Okay. Okay, and so how how do we how can we prove this? Uh, so remember, x and y are now or Hensilian, right? so x and y are Hensilian local, and this is the complement. Um, and so uh, to prove this, I'm going to use a, a, a version of, uh, of Gabriel's lemma. So, uh, so one uses, one uses again. So there are ma many, many places where Gabriel's lemma is used, but again, this is the last one, I guess. But it's uh, somehow it's a, ref it's a slightly refined version of it. So let, let me explain uh, what what it is. Um, so okay, well how how you would do this? So um, um, 
yeah, so you, you can say, okay, th 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 there should be some z inside x uh, closed uh, such that, so let, let, we, we take a class here, huh? so let's, let's, let's take some alpha here. So there you, you can always find some z closed such that, so, so of, of course I mentioned at least one, such that uh, alpha, when you restrict alpha to, uh, to x minus y minus z, uh, it gets uh, to zero, right? But because alpha, of course, vanished at the, as, a, as a generic point. Um, and so, uh, uh, and so then you are, uh, by, by, ver by, by version of Gabor's lemma, you, uh, you can find some x to some a1, uh, a1, uh, maybe c, um, which is et al, and which maps, map mapping uh, uh, y union z uh, isomorphically to y union z. Okay, that's, that's, a, the, that's basically uh, uh, Gabriel's lemma, but now I'm, I'm saying that there's a refined version uh, which, is, uh, which, uh, which ensure that somehow, uh, because y is smooth, you can, you can ask that y uh, maps uh, to t, and then it, uh, the, 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 ma the use map from y to t is et al. Okay, that's b by, and b because you, you, ha you have some room uh, uh, in choosing the projection uh, in Gabriel's lemma, you can, you can ensure this, this condition. It's an open condition, and so, so you, can you can ask that y is mapped uh, in an et al morphism to t, but since we are, we are in, the, in the Hensinian case, actually I can uh, pretend that or can replace uh, uh, t by y and ask that, wa that y goes maybe to the zero section. Uh, okay, so I can, I can ensure that my, my y is going to the zero section, z is going, to s is going somewhere, but uh, that's it. Okay, and now how do we conclude using this? Now we do as usual. So uh, we we have we have this uh, we have a Nistevich square. So uh, yeah. So we have this Nistevich square which looks like this. So it's x minus y going to uh, to g m y. Right. It's uh, a one minus zero g m y. And then uh, here we have the uh, x minus y minus z, and that's going to g m y minus z or something like this. And this is uh, a Nisnevich square, and so we we get we get as usual um, uh, a morphism fiber sequences. So uh, it looks like this. I guess uh, the cohomology of um, x minus y, which is the thing that you are, you are trying to show is zero, um, to, uh, to the cohomology of x minus y minus z. And here we have the cohomology of, um, of gm. Uh, I, I, I'm not putting the m here, right? But Okay, so m is everywhere. Anyway, so uh, here we have the fibers, and they are uh, equivalent because this is a Nisnevi square. Now I, we, we have our alpha, which is a cohomology class in this complex. It maps to zero by assumption, so it can be lifted to something here, which I can then put put here, uh, and so. Then uh, alpha will be the image uh, by this composition, so it's enough to show that uh, that uh, this goes here to zero. But that's clear because uh, maybe I, okay. So wh why this is clear? Because uh, gamma g m y m. This is uh, if you want. This is gamma of y with value in in m g uh, or sorry. It's yeah. 
and minus one. And that, that, that follows from the fact that the Eilerberg Maxine space And now, uh, since y is Hansenian local, this is uh, constant. So conc conclude using that y. y is Hansenian. OK. I hope this is convincing. Uh, yeah, that's somehow, uh, I think, this second key, key proposition. And now we can conclude. So let, let me finish by uh, telling you how we conclude. The proof. Um, so, end of the proof. All right, so. We want to show that M is N plus one strongly invariant. Namely, we want to show that uh, HN plus one of X with value in M is isomorphic to HN plus one uh, V1. Okay, that's, that's what, that's our, this is our goal. And uh, so there are some standard uh, argument here to reduce the case uh, where x is local. So maybe first I have to say that I'm going to prove this by, in, by induction on the dimension of x. And so, yeah, there are some standard techniques to reduce to the case where x is Hensilian. So we may assume that x is Hensilian. This local Hensilian. So here x is uh, essentially smooth as usual. Okay, so how, how do we, uh, how can we do this? So uh, I, mean, I, I want to use the previous proposition. So let, let y be, just take some y inside x as a smooth hypersurface. All right, so the good thing with this is that now if you look at the complement, since we are in the local situation, this has dimensions smaller than, than x. Dimension smaller than the dimension of x. So I can use induction to deduce that uh, we know the result for, for this guy. Okay, so we, and we want to use to, to use this to, to, to complete. So let's so I, I'm going to draw, to draw a diagram for this. Uh, yeah, so, uh, um, right, so, uh, right, so, so the thing that we are interested in is the HN plus one XN. So that goes to HN plus one uh, uh, X minus Y. And what comes here, uh, maybe I just write it first and then. Um, yeah. So what you have here is an HN plus one, uh, actually Y, with value in this I upper shrink of N. Okay? And then what comes after is an H and an H N uh, X minus one. Okay, that's, so we have this exact sequence which, which somehow relates the cohomology of x with this. I mean, this is zero, right? But, but uh, we'll, yeah. I will write the same thing for a one x, and then it's maybe more interesting. Uh, but so, okay, we have this, and now by by the previous uh, proposition, uh, so this cohomology group is like you, you can uh, truncate uh, because it's you can truncate up to n plus one, and by the previous proposition, this is actually just uh, h n y uh, n minus one. Okay? Right, because 
uh, we, we know that the, the, the hn of, uh, of this guy is zero. And what ha also, all the, all the commonality sheaf, all, all the sheaf, the commonality sheaf between uh, degree two and n plus one are, are zero. And, and o o o only this ca can contribute to the, H to the hn plus one. So at the end, we, we end up with this. Uh, yeah. So it's n, n plus one shifted, so it's, it's this. Is it, is it uh, okay? Or, yeah? So I, I'm using the fact that, that uh, m minus one, minus one is a truncation of i upper shift, which I, I just proved uh, before. Okay? Good, so I, I, I'm going to replace this guy by this guy. So hn. minus one okay so we have this sequence and we have a similar one uh, for any x actually and in particular for uh, for x times uh, a1 so let's let's write it down and I'm going to use uh, uh, yeah I guess these maps so the, the maps going up uh, which is which are given by, by the, the, the restriction uh, along the zero section um, so this would be x minus one a1 x X minus Y. So here I have an H N A one Y N. And here I have an H N A one X minus Y. All right. And now let, let's let's look at uh, at, this, at this diagram, so um, so these morphism are uh, isomorphism by uh, b because because uh, because m is uh, n strongly invariant, okay, and m in degree n. Uh, this one is an isomorphism uh, by induction on the dimension of uh, of x because x minus y, as I said, I mean it's, 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 it's in here actually, okay. Uh, and now a, a simple diagram, diagram chase will tell you that this is actually uh, injective. Hmm? Don't you need the fi five term to, to, to have a five lemma? <laughs> I don't know. I, okay, so, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, so it's injective and, and, and then we are done because uh, you choose the right map uh, and this map is uh, clearly surjective, it has a section. Uh, a refraction or, or a section, I don't know, section. So we are done, that's, that's the proof. Okay, so I don't know how, how much time I still have. Oh, what? <laughs> I, I was hoping for half an hour to speak, to, to, to start my, my, my lecture for, but <laughs> okay, so I don't know what to, what to do now, so doesn't make sense to start with this. So yeah, I, I, I was planning to speak about uh, some application to vector bundles. Uh, yeah, let, let me just say, say a few words just to, uh, to spend five minutes, or, or, or you can leave, I don't know, it's, it's up to you. Or maybe you have some question about this proof. I don't know. I, I could also, I mean, if there, there was one, one point which was not made, which I was not so uh, clear, I could spend some time explaining it if you want. I don't know. Otherwise, okay. So, uh, lecture four. Application. Okay. So, what are the wh what are the applications that I wanted to mention? Uh, so these are uh, these are application to vector bundles, and th these are also somehow thing that you you would find in in Fabian's book. Uh, all right. So so quick, quickly. So uh, what is the point here? So so uh, the starting point is uh, you have this uh, set. So for any 
uh, smooth variety X, you, you look at Z and X, which is this, the isomorphism classes of uh, rank N vector bundles on X. And uh, so, uh, so it's a theorem that you find in the, in the book of Morin, which, which was actually uh, simplified later on by um, by uh, Azok, Hoiwa, and Bent. Uh, and it's, it's a represent representability theorem. So it, it says that uh, Vn of x, if x is affine, uh, smooth affine, uh, uh, is uh, the set of, of, um, of maps in the moral Wojewski category between, uh, between x and uh, BGNN. Right, so we have this, and I, I, okay, I guess this theorem does not use anything I, uh, I said today, uh, th during this week. Um, but, uh, okay, so wh why this is interesting? So maybe some remark. So, uh, it, so if you put, instead of A1, you put Nisnevich, this is an obvious uh, theorem. So this is something that is, uh, when when known somehow, uh, that's uh, and it's true for any x. Uh, you don't need x to be affine or, or smooth. Uh, so why th why this is better than that? Uh, so the reason uh, that the theorem is better is because uh, BGNN uh, in so when you view it as an object of this category, uh, for example, is uh, is one connective. Okay, which is which is the same for that, but. Um, it, it, okay, it's it's one connective, and also, and it's uh, it's pi one is very simple. Uh, it's GM, and somehow o o all all the all the complications are somehow are are hidden in in the in the higher uh, pi, pi i. Whereas this guy is kind of more uh, naive in some sense. It's it's an Albert McCain space, so uh, there's only pi one here, and, and, and yeah, you you, ca you cannot do much with it. Uh, so here you can hope to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to try to compute homotopy groups and, uh, and try to, to get uh, um, uh, some result uh, uh, using this uh, uh, bijection on, on vector bundles. And this, this was a, a quite a su successful uh, approach. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to, to say much uh, uh, about this, but, uh, and I guess the fact that, that, that you know that these pi i's are nice and they are strictly invariant, and then you can compute them using uh, Cousin complexes or things like that. is very useful uh, uh, to, to get information about about vector bundles. Yeah. So I guess I, I it may be good to stop here.